Good afternoon. Hey, what's your name? My name is Tom Hurd. I'm the vice president of the Historical Society and kind of plan the whole event. Uh, most of the event with the help of Brian Tang, we're the president of the Historical Society. And uh, just want to thank the town of Templeton for letting us use the common, the cultural council for the, for the uh, band. Um, the band, of course, Boot Hill Express, they're doing an awesome job. Uh, and all the cars that come through, all our volunteers that have worked very hard today to put this on and make it a success. We've got a very large collection of vehicles. Oh, there's probably going to be 50 or 60, I would think. There's, there's quite a few. I didn't do a physical count, but there's a lot. The common on, uh, on Baldwin Road, between Baldwin and Boynton's full. The common behind the bandstand's pretty full. So we got, we got quite, a, quite a few cars. Um, I don't know about the biggest, but it's comparable to the bigger ones we've had. It's a beautiful day. The sun's in, so it's, so it's not beating down on us. And it's a little overcast, and hopefully the rain will hold off till later on tonight. It'll be in good shape. Yeah, I thought it was fitting for the day. I was kind of worried about the short sleeves with the breeze and everything, but I'm, stay I'm moving around a lot and staying warm. Um, most of them, but probably not all of them. Some of the older ones I have trouble with. Um, a variety. There's, there's a variety. There's GTOs. There's a there's an older El Camino, um, old Ford, an older Ford pickup truck. There's a looks like a 1920s. I believe they called them a high boy. Um, we have a stagecoach. This here is our 1851 fire pumper. Um, it was hand drawn to the fire. It can suck water out of a pond, or they can do a bucket brigade and dump the water into the into the tank. And it's it's pulled by hand, and it's six people on each side use it to pump the water. The handles will go up and down, but they won't. I don't believe they go full. I think the seals are all kind of dried out and stuff. But uh, it's an awesome piece of machinery. Yeah, we keep it inside the building, out of the weather. Um, and it has. Like I said, it was built in 1851, which um, probably, I don't know if it's one of the oldest pieces of equipment we have, because we also have John Boynton's tin wagon um, over on the other side. We have John Boynton, as a matter of fact, started WPI. He had a little tin shop where the Grange Hall was um, in the 18... Um, he started about 1824, 23 or 24 over there, and then um, later on he went off, went on to start WPI. Then the Grange bought it in 1897, and actually in 1921 they doubled the size of the building, and the Grange sold it to us in 1993, and we've been um, we've been on the track to remodel it. And uh, we're getting very close. Within the next uh, couple of years or so, we'll be we'll be open and hopefully having community events where we can do um, Lions Club meetings, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, um, community maybe community dances. We have a lot of we have a lot of vision on what the building could be used for. So um, that would be a good thing for the community. Um, I believe it's been this is our eighth. Oh, the Palooza? But I'd have to look back because I, I, I mean, time flies, but I think it might have started before that. But I believe it's around the 8th, Motor Palooza. This one's very memorable because I, I kind of chaired the whole Motor Palooza for the first time. And it's been a good learning experience. But now that the day's here, I'm just happy it's a good turnout and good weather. So... Um, I want to thank the town of Templeton. I think I might have thanked them already, but I want to thank the town of Templeton, all the volunteers we have, the, the um, um, Templeton Cultural Society uh, Committee for the donate for the uh, paying us for the band, Templeton TV for being here and representing and recording this for everybody to see, and um, all the volunteers we have. We have an awesome group of volunteers. And I would like to say, if you're watching this, join us. We're here from 1 to 5 on Saturday. Come on down. Uh, go through the building. I think you'll be amazed if you've never been in the building as to what we have. And we're always looking for new members to, to help us 
saved and uh, preserved the artifacts of Templeton's history. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. Tom. Thank you. It's a 1915 brass Model T touring car. It's been had a complete restoration about 12 years ago, and we've owned it for about 12 years. We bought it from the original people that had it, and they had it restored. Unfortunately, uh, the gentleman passed away and could no longer drive it, and we bought it from the family so that we could use it uh, with our family. Uh, unfortunately, uh, not too much. Uh, it probably gets 14 or so miles per gallon. Uh, it's a no electric start. It has to start with a crank. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's a fun car to drive. You don't go very fast with it, but it's, uh, it's a fun car to drive, especially on these country roads. Quite often, uh, it's, uh, it comes out when the weather's nice. Uh, this time of the year, we enjoy driving it to see the foliage and stuff. And, we take it to the car shows that are local and uh, really enjoy using it. We get a lot of people that have uh, grown up with these cars, older people, and they, it brings back memories to them and they, they enjoy talking about them and talking about when their fathers or grandfathers you know, had a car like this and they used to ride in it. And uh, you get to meet a lot of nice people uh, you know, having a car like this and, and talking to them. This is the... the the model of, of this car was started in 1908 by Henry Ford. That was his first production year. This is a 1915, so it's seven years into the production. Uh, and it's pretty much the same as when he started. Uh, there's very few changes in what they call the brass era, which was 08 to 15. Uh, in 1916, they did away with most of the brass. They had a little bit, and uh, that was the end of the, the brass era. Uh, so that it uh, it's pretty much, uh, the same as when he started building them. The car is very simple. Anything on the car was there for a reason. It, there's no frills on the car. It's uh, pretty much if you have a screwdriver and a pair of pliers and it breaks down, you can get yourself home. Uh, pretty easy to repair. Very easy to, to get replacement parts for it too because they made 15 million of them and uh, consequently there's an awful lot of spare parts floating around the countryside. This is exactly 1915. There are no modifications. Everything on this car is 1915. There's no aftermarket parts on it. It's, uh, it's all original. What a beautiful well, car, Tom. How'd you come across this? Um, well, I found it um, uh, on Hemmings, basically, a website for classic cars. I actually wasn't looking for um, this type of car. I was actually looking for an early 60s Pontiac. Um, but I saw this online. Um, I was bringing my daughter to college uh, with all her stuff down in Georgia. This car was in uh, New Jersey. So I called the guy up the night before and said, well, can I pop in and, and take a look? And uh, he said, sure, it's still for sale. Why don't you come on down? And I saw it. I loved it. It looked every bit as good as the photos. And uh, so I bought it about a year ago uh, in September. And uh, she's beauty. Uh, this is a, a 1956 Packard. Uh, it's a, a luxury make that used to compete with uh, Cadillac and with Lincoln. Uh, it was actually the last year, uh, they, they say the true Packards, the ones that were built in Detroit, because after 56, they merged with Studebaker. And uh, they basically rebadged Studebakers for Packards the last couple of years. This was the last year that it was made in Detroit, and they kind of threw everything they could at it to, to try and uh, increase sales. So it's got all fancy features, uh, push button automatic, uh, power windows, power seats, power brakes, power steering, all that kind of stuff. Um, what's unique about the car is it's got a torsion bar suspension, which um, it's a little different. Um, they used to use those, that type of suspension on tanks actually. And uh, uh, another cool feature is because it has the torsion bar suspension, it also has a self-leveling feature. So if, if the car gets weighed down in the back, uh, there's a system that, that turns the, a torsion bar and levels the car automatically, which is totally stock for 1956. She rides great and uh, everything works but the clock. You could spend an afternoon just polishing chrome on this car. And, uh, have you? I have, I have. Uh, those are the chores that you, you don't mind doing. Um, this, the mechanical stuff is a little, little more stressful because if you know, you just you know, you break down or whatever, and that that kind of thing. But that 
that's you know, price for admission when you have a classic car. And, uh, but it's been pretty reliable this summer. I haven't had too many issues with it. And uh, there's always a list of things that you can do. And, uh, but that's okay. Um, I've driven it, uh, I went to a show in Andover. That was probably the furthest that I've driven it this, this season. But a lot of the local shows, I went to Amherst, New Hampshire, um, down to uh, Sturbridge. So pretty much all around Massachusetts um, and a little bit in New Hampshire. So maybe the longest trip, like I said, Andover was like uh, a little over 100 miles round trip. Um, I get a little nervous on the highway. You know, you don't want to have a rock kicked up on the windshield. They're not easy to get. Um, but yeah, I went to um, I went to Kimball's. They have a, a cruise night down there on the Fridays. And I stayed later than I wanted to. A lot of people were interested in the car and I got to talking and I was running late. So I'm like, okay, I'll take it on the highway to get home. And I was actually passing cars on the highway with it. I mean, it, it, it just goes, you know, 70 miles an hour, no problem, you know? So, uh, yeah. I got a kick out of the dashboard and the trunk and uh, yeah. how much space there is. And yeah, it, it's a big car. Remember it's, those shelves? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost 19 feet long, uh, about 4,500 pounds, which actually, people are surprised it doesn't weigh more than that. Um, it was cool, at, at Kimball's, there's a gentleman who had a 56 Coupe de Ville, the, you know, competing Cadillac car of the, of the day, and we compared and contrasted. And um, another cool feature on this car is Packard was the only independent that developed their own automatic transmission. Uh, other independents would just buy the, the GM Hydromatic. And uh, the Hydromatic was what they used to call a slush bucket. There was never any direct contact uh, between the clutches. You know, it was a fluid driven kind of transmission. So the 56 Coupe de Ville gets maybe nine miles to the gallon on a good day. The Packard transmission actually has a lock up torque converter, so you actually get that contact with the clutch, like a modern automatic transmission. So I can get 17 miles to the gallon with this car, which is still not great by today's standards, but it's really tremendous for 1956 for this size of car, yeah. So. I love all the details in the hood on it. Yeah, that's a deadly weapon. Um, it's literally a spear. Um, you can see why they outlawed them eventually, you know. And that's, that's the reason you don't see hood ornaments today is they're hazardous for pedestrians, but it is definitely cool. So how long have you owned your Triumph? Ah, uh, since April. Yeah. Enjoying it? Yes. I put uh, 1,500 miles on it in a month and a half. Where'd you take it? Uh, around town. Yeah. I went through, um, well, I took it to Concord twice just to test it out on the highway to see what kind of temperatures it rose to. And then um, I drove it around town. So, a lot of people like it. It's a very nice car. It originally came with disc brakes from the factory and overdrive. It was an overdrive, electric overdrive. So, it's overdrive in every gear except for first. So, you can. Clicking into overdrive in second, clicking overdrive in third, fourth. So it has basically seven gears. So the disc brakes is this car was the first car British put the disc brakes in. They ra they rally raced the cars, tested the brakes out on that, and then they installed them on this car in '59. A lot of people put a supercharger on them. They built a supercharger for the car. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that yet. The person I bought it from had it for 30 years, and he had a he had had one for every year. So he really liked the car. If he kept it that long, he has a lot of cars. So when he put a number on it, I decided I I have a '73 Triumph Bonneville that my father bought in '74 motorcycle. So, I like the way they sound. It's got a different sound to it. The other thing is this car, 
It's built for the back roads that we have here, you know, and it's kind of hard to drive a Chevelle around Vermont and up in the hills and down. And I wanted a car that I could drive, you know, on the back roads and, and enjoy, you know, the scenery and stuff. But I didn't want to have a big motor car where it caused problems going up and down the hill, hills. So, oh yeah, it does, it does 110. It ha it, there's no uh, lag in the car from zero to 100 because of the seven gears. So you can hit in between the gears. Like if you're driving in traffic, you don't have to shift. All you have to do is shut the overdrive switch on and turn it back on. So it'll shift from down the third and up third and a half without touching the, the, um, the shifter. So, which is pretty good when you're driving in traffic that slows down, speeds up, slows down, and speeds up. You don't have to do that. You can do that in second, depending on how fast the traffic is going. Or you can do it in third or fourth on the highway. You know, when you're going to Concord or something, you could, you know, shift it in an overdrive. I think the brakes, the front disc brakes, the overdrive, um, and the handling of the vehicle. That's basically why I bought it. Yeah. I've had a few cars, but you know, nothing like, like this. You know, I was looking for a roadster, but the guy that built the car built it as a roadster. There ain't no roof in it. He took all the mechanicals out. His wife ripped, ripped her dress on the, because there's slides that go in the doors to make it a full door, there's slides. She ripped her dress on it, and they're going out to eat, and uh, he cut his arm on it, so when he built the car, he didn't put the mechanicals back in. You know, and he put them wheels on there because they originally came with spoke wheels with center cap or with a center nut, but the spokes have to be tuned like a guitar. You know, when you hit potholes or when you tighten the wheels, they tune them like a guitar and they gotta be tuned all the time. Otherwise it wears the uh, wheels off, the tires off. So he put these on there. One, you can put bigger tires on it, you know, and two, you don't have to tune them. But when he built the car, he towed it so it handled really, really well. So I blew those tires off the front in 1,500 miles. I got another set coming. I live down the street, but... Hey, you got a big smile on your face, so you must have liked it. Yeah, because <laughs> when you go into the, you know, especially that road or there's a few roads around here, you know, state roads and stuff, it really handles really good. And I think part of that has to do with the way it's towed, but... So. Jeffrey James Bourne, nice to meet the world. Jeffrey, tell us about your convertible pickup truck. <laughs> well, it's custom made by me, and I've been doing this for the last 30 years. Um, well, you chop it, and see, the roof used to go like this, the cab. So what I do is cut off the wood, and open the door. You see right here, that, I left it rough so you can see how where it might chopped it. And then you uh, cut off the whole roof. And here's the rear window line right here. So I cut it off at the rear window line and then remove the top. And on the trail dusters and ramp charges, the top goes all the way to the tailgate and the back seat is back here. Well, what I did was mate, I took the roof line and instead of going all the way back, I cut it off at the rear uh, sliding window. I put a sliding window into it. My buddy's like, well, paint it, and then the value would go up to about 20000 But I'd rather keep it like this if I want to go to the shows or to a mud bog or out in the woods or whatever. I don't have to worry about scratching it. Yes, a hard top. Yeah? I made a hard top. And, um, For the cab. Yeah, and it, it sits from, from here to here, and I incorporated a rear sliding window into the hard top. And... Um, my dad's friend, Jimmy Durgis from Hubbardston, he taught me how to do it. It's called dropping it in. He did the first one, I did this one, and, and uh, he said this one come out just as good as the first one, what, what he did. And he's a professional. It's a 74 Dodge Power Wagon. We got a Tim Hess 318, 340 horse. They run strong, it's a four speed. I did new springs, new sharks, new motor, headers, dual exhaust. Um, it's got airbag suspension, it's got Rancho 9,000 9-way adjustable shocks. 
and I put a 1999 cab and a half seats in it, which uh, is an easy hot rod setup because you just bolt them in and they already got the seat belts in them. So, yeah. And this hood scoop I put on it, this comes off an old Ford dump truck where the hood scoop would be turned around from what it is on the passenger side facing the glass on the old gas job uh, Ford dump trucks. And uh, so when I got it from Jimmy, he had this on there and I had just put it on this week. And I was running it without it with just the power wagon there, Mumson. And this is a tribute, tri uh, trivia truck to my goes back to my pit bull I had. That's a, a 1938 Mac off a of Mac truck, that Mac dog right there. And this also is a 72 grill, which looks different than the original 74. The 74s were more square and they had buyers coming down. This one's more, well, back when I was a kid, there was a show on uh, TV called Emergency. And that was a dually and it was a rescue truck but it had that same grill. So it gives this thing the look. And the people, a lot of people love this thing. I love it, it's really rugged. Oh yeah, it, just two wheel drive, it'll go up the local sand bank and take a jump like 10 feet in the air. And the kids are like, you're flying around on that thing like it's a four wheel. I says, well, it's four wheel drive, it is a four wheeler. <laughs> in a sense it is, it's more rugged than a four wheel. You got a steel frame, you know? I love it and enjoy it.